Enjoy another life-changing message from Pastor Steve Ciccolanti, made possible by friends and partners of Discover Ministries. Hey guys, Pastor Steve Ciccolanti here, and we're with Nathaniel Busalich, who is an Australian actor in Hollywood, and you'll know him from that great movie, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, I really enjoyed your movie. Yeah. And I just, when I see you in person, I'm, I'm amazed how you look so much like um, Andrew, Andrew Garfield, Garfield yeah. the, the main actor in that. So how did you land that role and, and what was the experience like? Uh, so I just auditioned for it actually. I put myself on tape while I was in the, in the uh, just back, back, back in Los Angeles and uh, Mel Gibson reviewed the tapes. I was up for another role but when they saw myself and Andrew Garfield together they realized that we just looked too similar to be anything else so we, I just ended up getting the brother role which was yeah it was an awesome experience. That was really good and um, Mel, boy he's done the body of Christ service with the passion mm. of the Christ. Um, you got to know him a little bit? Yeah, I got to know him, got to ask him questions about passion of the Christ and his experiences with that, which were, you know, incredible. You always think like there's, you know, this spiritual warfare that constantly goes on in our world that we sometimes try and ignore or forget. But, you know, Mel made it really clear while he was filming that, that there were so many things that were happening that they couldn't explain, but definitely God's finger was on it. I, I was really um, interested when Mel Gibson uh, spoke, I actually saw him speak uh, last year and I mean he talked about how Jim Caviezel was struck by lightning yes. I mean that's just it's pretty scary and he had a lot of struggles spiritually yeah I think he came to faith though didn't he yeah I mean he's a he, he would be a really you know I would consider him a really strong Christian in, in you know in the, in, the, in the Hollywood industry today and I heard some of his interviews and you know he's definitely passionate about it. and I think mm. you know if you play Jesus and you really delve mm. into that role I think you have a choice you know I was reading, I think it was on Twitter or something, that they were they, they don't give many roles to Jim Caviezel anymore. Right, yeah. But he came out, he recently was in the uh, Paul the Apostle yeah. uh, movie. He played Luke, yeah. That was really good. He played Luke. Um, he was a real compassionate Luke. Um, had to go to prison to meet Paul. So if you haven't seen that movie, that was really good. Who made that movie? I don't know. I, right now, all I was thinking is I wish I looked more Middle Eastern so I could be in those uh, movies. That was know? really good. So, so you're one of the few you know, born again, Bible believing yeah. Christians, pro Israel. Yeah. And I mean, that's got to be tough, no? There's not, there's not too many Jim Caviezel's and Mel Gibson's around. No, there's not. And I think it's, you know, people always ask me this question. It's like, what is it like to be a, a Christian actor in Hollywood, you know, in that environment? And I, I honestly don't think there's any difference between me being a Christian in, in my workforce and someone who's a, a carpenter in, you know, Melbourne. Uh, being a Christian in his workforce because every day you're going to face the same thing which is people expecting something from you which is probably not what Christianity represents and people having these misconceptions of who Jesus is who God is and and what we're really called to do as Christians so you know even though I have this platform I actually still think the choice is exactly the same as every single human being which is am I gonna stand up for Christ or am I gonna hide it and keep it to myself you know so there isn't many in the industry, but I think it's just that simple choice of going, well, what, what is my life going to represent ultimately? There's a lot of uh, stereotyping uh, you were mentioning to me in Hollywood that people just assume if you're a Christian and you became, you came here as a non-Christian yeah. actor yeah. and in the process you got saved. Yeah. I love to hear that, but they just stereotype Christians as, what do they think? What do the Hollywood people think of Christians? I think there's just, you know, a reputation of Christianity over, you know, the centuries that, you know, Christians aren't right. Christians are judgmental. They're, they're self-righteous. They're proud. They, they think they're better than other people. And, you know, I think that the problem really has been is there's just been this huge disconnect of like, who Jesus really is, you mm. know, and I, you know, I often think about when, you know, the Israelites had came back to Jerusalem and they were rebuilding the temple, you know, God says in Haggai that they went off and started building their own homes and he said, well, what about the temple? Mm. You know, and they said, mm. we need to rebuild the temple. And I think we're in a time now in human history where we actually need to rebuild who Jesus really is to people. So we need to rebuild his reputation. And I think that's been lost. And that's why people automatically say you're Christian. They just assume that, you're, you say one thing, but you do what everybody else does, you know? Uh, I actually have quite a few um, Hollywood people, different Hollywood people follow us on YouTube, and I think there's gonna be a quiet revolution in this. I think that yeah. there'll be producers and directors who will uplift Jesus, and I think the day is coming when it's gonna be uncool to not be Christian. Yeah, yeah. 
it's going to be cool to follow Jesus. I mean, this is, he's the winner. He's the absolute winner. And if you're following Jesus, you're on the winning side. You should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of the church. You should be proud of Jesus. And uh, God is raising up a lot of people. Nathaniel's one of them. I just think it's it's amazing. I mean, what? You from Melbourne? Uh, from Sydney. You're from Sydney. Yeah, Imagine from Sydney. Like God raised up a young man from Sydney, yeah. sent him to Hollywood, put him in a big role, and uh, hang out with Mel Gibson. And, and I'm sure there's going to be many more roles. But you first started off, was it uh, a uh, yeah, series so on. A TV Vampire? series called The Vampire Diaries. The um, Vampire Diaries. Okay, anybody. Watch that because I'm sorry I did not watch so that one. Yeah, it's probably some teenage girls, possibly, and, okay. then, I, and then I moved on to uh, the spin-off show called The Originals. Okay. So that's been sort of running, uh, and I've been working on that for the last seven years. We finished up in December of last year, so it's all finished now. But okay. yeah, but it was an interesting experience because when I first got Vampire Diaries, I wasn't a believer, um, but I had to relocate myself to Atlanta, Georgia, and. Um, Three years earlier, a Christian friend of mine, we were actually driving back from um, from the snow, from Threadbow, and we had a you know an eight-hour drive back to Sydney, and he he was like, do you mind if we watch some Christian DVDs? And at that point in my life, I was like, no, no way, I'd prefer to just look out the window and, you know, watch cars go by. And he eventually convinced me to watch some, and he put on this DVD. Um, do you remember the D DVD? Uh, the DVD was uh, about the universe. It was a guy by, by the name of Louis Giglio, who's oh, incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you um, go. Okay, so it's a good apologetic DVD, yeah, got a bit of and science. Was, you know, yeah, and look, it wasn't like forceful, and it was just a new way to, like, he spoke about God, and how God is like, you know, he's here, he's present, he's active, and everything points to his glory. You know, and by the end of the first DVD, I was kind of intrigued. So I, I said, well, let's come watch another one. Can we watch another one? We ended up watching a fair few. And the funny thing is, three years later, I get to Atlanta and my friend Justin, who was the guy who kind of introduced me to it, ended up popping up on Facebook my first night in the hotel. And he said, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm in Atlanta. I've got my first acting job. And I, you know, at that point, I'm thinking my life is all about me. And he said, oh, remember those DVDs we watched? The pastor of that, um, of, of the guy that spoke on these DVDs is a pastor of a church in Atlanta, you should go. And it turned out that, you know, the, the church was 10 minutes from my house, so I went along and, you know, I heard Louis speak and, and then, you know, God sort of opened up all these doors and opportunities and one thing led to another until I got to hear this message at a passion conference in, you know, 2012, where Louis sort of spoke about what's your life going to represent? And what, what, is, what, what do you put above all things? And at that point it was acting was myself. And I remember, you know, as a child, there were moments where I was fascinated about the story of Jesus, but never connected with it. And then I thought, I've never ever actually put God above all things. I've never put Jesus as the centerpiece of my story. So that night I went home and I decided to become a Christian, you know, and, and, and give my life to him fully. And I remember looking at my Twitter because Instagram wasn't around back then. And the description on my Twitter said, actor slash social drinker. And I remember sitting in my hotel room and looking at that and going, that is what my life represents right now. Mm. An actor slash social drinker. It's like my tombstone. Mm. That's what my life's gonna be. Um, so, you know, I changed it that night and I just put Jesus follower. And I think the interesting thing about that was I didn't realize what I was signing up for at that point. And, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do this and see where it goes. And, you know, now we fast forward, you know, seven years later and. You know, God has just worked so many different things in my life, including trips to Israel, you know, being open to all these new doors and, 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 and meeting different people in the Christian community and also just having a different impact than I ever thought I would, you know. Yeah. So it's been a it's been a, a, a radical journey and that's the very short compressed version yeah. of it all. But yeah. And it's all and you're it's just begun. Seven yeah. years is really new. Yeah. Um, and I just love that seven years because yeah, I, I love how God works in seasons. And, that's right. And this cycles. was a, this was a this is a cycle of seven years, yeah. and, it, and it ended, you yeah. know, as such. And there's like, I guess, an open door right now because I'm free, but I'm also looking at like where do I fit in now as a Christian actor, and do I continue working as an actor, or do I, you know, move into this world even more, which I'm become so passionate about. You mm. know. Yeah, well, I hear you're, you're going to be uh, taking some people out to Israel. Yeah, so I'm doing, be a, really cool. doing a tour in uh, in May 2019 uh, from the 19th to the 27th. So we've got people coming along and we're going to walk from Nazareth to Capernaum. So do yeah. the walk where Jesus would have walked yeah. uh, to Capernaum and just sort of show them the, the significant sites where Jesus performed some of his most powerful miracles and then yes. try and explain yeah. how those powerful miracles relate to us today. 
Yeah, trips to Israel are just life changing, mm. and that's a that's a bit of a a gym slash Israel tour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a like, walk. Did live with fitness, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Know, get get America fit. Well, maybe before we uh, before we go, uh, tell us a little bit about how did you find out about Discover Ministries and and end up yeah. watching that's funny. me on YouTube. Well, yeah, so the same friend that got me onto the DVDs, his dad is you know he's a he's just a such a strong christian and he's always sending me emails like how oh, you should watch this or you should watch this and you should watch uh -huh. this and and your name popped up and you know it was sort of during the time of president trump and and you know a lot of the stuff that's happening in our world with the signs and you know the 23rd of september and and i just got sort of fascinated by well you know this story is so active you know sometimes we read our bible and we think okay two thousand years ago and that's cool now i'm just like waiting until you know, Jesus comes back and there's no, there's no more signs, there's no more prophets, there's no, you know, I'm just waiting. But then I guess it reignited that excitement of like, no, God is actually working right now and he's present. So I absolutely agree with that. I just want everyone watching to know that, you know, God is working not only in your life, but he's working on the nations. Mm. You know, the gospel, the great commission was for the nations. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 2 says that Jesus is the savior and the king of the nations. And our call is so much bigger. If you're a Christian that's kind of gone a bit cold or quiet, I just, I just want you to look at Nathaniel and just get inspired that your life is is designed by God and your life has a God-filled purpose. If you just get on your knees and you say, Lord, use me. I'm tired of the way I'm just living for myself, but I want to put God above. Yeah. He will do incredible things. And I shouldn't say incredible because you should believe it, but He will do such wonderful things in your life and that's why we're here you know we're just wanting to encourage you because uh, God loves you and God has uh, such a destiny for every person that is watching uh, I want to tell you one more thing actually something that was prophetic that happened that I haven't told anyone yet we were talking about the midterm election and how the results have been a bit surprising yeah. that the Republicans lost the house but look the thing is this the Senate is the more powerful of the two bodies of, in Congress. So I just made a video that said um, Trump is going to nominate at least one but probably two more uh, Supreme Court justices and all he needs is the majority in the Senate to approve. Wow. So he's got it. Wow. He's got it. It's guaranteed and you know it hasn't even been the, the changeover is going to happen in January and I said, Ruth Ginsburg, it's her time to go. And I just said that. And today, she fell down and broke three of her ribs. Wow. Now, we don't celebrate anybody getting hurt. The lady's, you know, old and we respect her for what she's done so far. But she is not pro-church, pro, you know, Christ, and, and not pro-babies. So. Donald Trump is going to have an opportunity very soon to nominate somebody else and now it's not going to be like Brett Kavanaugh. Mm. It's going to go right through because they have a clear majority now in the Senate. And I just think all these things happening while we're here, while we're talking and, and the timing of it, it just shows how real God is mm. and how he's above even politics. He doesn't want our faith to be in politics and politicians. And I'll tell you something else that the Lord said to me just while I was praying in America, the Lord said to me that judgment on Hillary Clinton will not come from Congress. It will come from me. Wow. It will not come from uh, politicians, I think is what he said. It will not come from politicians. It will come from me. Yeah. So we'll see, you know, but the job of the prophet or of the, the Bible teacher is to declare forth his truth and then you will see that God is at work. And if He's at work on, on such a complex level, imagine what He can do in our lives. Yeah, it's massive. And I think like, you know, for me as a Christian, the, the biggest step that I ever took was actually just submitting myself to the will of God. When you, it's like this, you sit in an exit row on an airplane and the only question that they'll ask you is that, are you willing and able to assist in the case of an emergency? And I really feel like, for us as Christians today, that's all we need to do with God. God's come to us and said, I will use you in, in the emergencies of other people's lives, in the emergencies of communities, people in need, as long as you're willing and able to assist in that. And I think that's the only choice we ever have to really make, you know. So, you know, and, and everything, everything that I've learned, because my, my journey as a Christian is very, very new, but 
everything comes from the word. If the word isn't at the center of everything, yeah. then you're not going to be led anywhere. You know, That's and you right. look at the Israelites when they were led out by the ark, the word led them. The, the word was at the center of the camp. The word led them through. It's, it always has to go back to the word of God. And the more you learn about who God is through his word, the more confidence you have in the promises he's made and, 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 the, and the, the sort of power that he has over your life. But everything has to go back to the Bible. And I think what I've realized as a Christian is that I, I, I never knew enough when I started and, and I still not, don't know enough. And if I'm not hungry and, and I don't delight in learning more about God, then my journey will always come to a place where I, I, I stumble and I fail and I fall. And I think most Christians today, what we need to do is actually re-educate ourselves on, you know, the Bible. Just it's get, so simple. Just read the Word of God yeah. every day. I'm, I'm surprised how many Christians say to me, they know the Word, they know it all, and yet if I ask, you know, do you read your Bible? Nope. Yeah. Not reading the Bible. Yeah. And here's the thing with, I've known a few actors. Actors are voracious readers. Are you a reader? Oh, yeah, I mean, I got up at 4 a.m. this morning to study my Bible. I study all day. Actors are readers, and, yeah. and you gotta, you know, young people, if you've got an aspiration to be in Hollywood or in these, you know, become a celebrity for Jesus, don't think it's just gonna land on you. Every actor I know reads reams mm. of, of text yeah. and, and devour uh, reading, just devour books. You'd have to always be reading, right? Yeah, constantly, yeah, reading, and also just like understanding story, you know, I think that's why I'm kind of lucky as an actor. I understand story, and I understand that the story of the Bible, you've got this this huge story of who God is, but then you, you sometimes zoom into these smaller characters and, and you zoom in and it's like that actually tells us then that, that God is zooming into our lives. You know, that we've got this huge story of yes. God's salvation for us all and redemption of humanity, but he's also, he zooms into these little moments, these just like these little interactions we have on, you know, the streets of Anaheim, but God is present and he's zooming in on these moments and yes. what he does with Praise this is Lord. what's so amazing that even though he's so big, He's never too big to get small with us, which I find just like beautiful. And, yeah. and when I read the story of the Bible, I think that's what I take away from it. I've got this, you know, I'm constantly going from this, you know, 30,000 feet overlooking everything. And then sometimes we zoom straight into where it's like, we're listening to conversations of prophets and people. And, and, and it's like fascinating to see how the little stories make up the big picture of who God is. And that's what we have to kind of constantly tap back into. Yeah. I appreciate your time so much. I appreciate the, all the insights you've given us yeah. and um, just be encouraged whatever, wherever you are in your life right now um, the easiest thing to start to get back with God is just pick up that Bible and uh, put God first put God like Nathaniel said just put God first and you should follow his Instagram I, I never met anyone with more Instagram followers personally it, how many million you got I got two million uh, on my personal account and I actually just started a new account called tag by Jesus which has 10,000 and that's just basically where I put up you know pictures that I've taken from Israel and I kind of relate a lot of the study that I do can, on there can you show your camera yeah yeah this is look a, at this camera uh, it's only uh, this is the little it's the little one the carry around so all, all his Instagram are on these you know it's, it's just beautiful beautiful uh, Instagram photos mine's is on iPhone yeah. so you should go and follow his Instagram it's awesome and he's unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto our salvation unto our healing unto our freedom amen. whatever you need amen all right God bless you from California <laughs> take care guys bye You've been listening to Pastor Steve Ciccolanti, a prophetic voice in our time. And this ministry is made possible by the generosity of partners and friends. Please consider becoming one today.